Let's talk about something super important. Your Z seam. A lot of people get super confused about the Z seam and they think it's a defect rather than a feature of 3D printing. I will see a lot of posts on 3D printer groups where people are like, guys, what are these marks? My print looks great, but look at this. And what they're showing is their Z seam. Your Z seam is where the 3D printer stops the layer and then starts the next layer. There's a little stop and go. It creates a little mark and that's your Z seam. Now with each subsequent layer, there's another mark. As the model builds up, that mark creates your Z seam. Your Z seam could show up as a random pile of dots or as a line of dots. Sometimes that line of dots is in an inopportune location. I'm going to show you how to control how your Z seam is created and where your Z seam is created. This is super important because you can use this ability to relocate your Z seam in order to hide it from clear view and move it to where it's out of sight and not so readily apparent on your model when viewing it. Let's have a look at the Z seam on a couple of models and go over the Z seam adjustments you can make to locate the Z seam in the ideal location for your particular model. To start, you're going to want to go right over here and look for your Z seam setting. Now, you may notice your Z seam setting is not there. That's because Cura has it disabled or hidden by default. Don't confuse disabled with hidden. There are features that are enabled but are hidden from view. To enable your Z seam adjustment, you're going to go to Preferences, Configure Cura, Settings, and type in seam. You're going to see two options pop up that are super important. Z seam alignment and Z seam position. Check them both and press the X. You'll now notice a new option has appeared under your print settings called Z seam alignment. When you click on this and choose user specified, a second option appears called Z seam position. This is where you're actually going to place your Z seam. Let's go over them now. Here is a Buck 120 cosplay prop knife blade. The first thing you need to do in order to gain control over your Z seam is to place the knife in an ideal orientation for control. This knife just happens to fit front to back on the bed. So I am going to do it that way so I have a very clear and distinct position for front, back, left, and right. If I take this model and print it diagonally, which is actually fairly popular for a model like this, front, back, left, and right starts to become a little fuzzy. So if you can control your positioning and orientation a little better by placing it in such a way that front, back, left, and right are clear, I would go ahead and do that. Now that they're clear, Let's go ahead and have a look at how Z seam settings affect the model. Now this is a knife. It needs to look as clean as possible. Any kind of dots or defects or bumps would really affect the look and appearance and the effectiveness of this as a believable cosplay blade. So to do that, we need to hide the Z seam as best as possible. Let's go ahead and choose user specified and then front. Keep in mind the Z seam will not show until you slice it and look at the model in preview mode. So we're pressing slice. We've now sliced the model and you still see nothing because we're not in preview mode. So you can click preview here or preview here. Preview here only shows up one time. Once you click it, it disappears and you'll need to go back up here to switch between prepare and preview. Keep in mind your preview will remain until you make a change to your slicer settings. Once you do that, you would have to slice again in order to regain access to preview. So as you can see, this is your Z seam. It's represented by these white dots. This is not ideal for a knife prop because you're gonna see these defects right here on the front of the blade. Now they're not necessarily defects, they're a function of 3D printing, but 
they will be perceived as defects by anybody you would give this prop to. So we need to make them go away. We're going to go ahead and switch front to back. Then re-slice the model, and wouldn't you know, the Z-seam has disappeared because it's been shifted to the back. And here you go. The Z-seam is running along this edge and down the bottom here. And that's super for me because this model is going to be placed into a handle where the Z-seam can be fully hidden from sight. Remember, you are in control. Just because you open a model and it's facing a certain way, it's left or right, it's upside down, it's crooked, it's standing on its head, that doesn't mean you have to print it that way. You are in control, it's your model, it's your slice, you are the boss. You can orientate this model however you like. I'm going to orientate my model front to back so I can be in better control of the Z-seam. For example, it's defaulted to random. Let's click slice and see what random looks like. So here we have random. Every one of these dots is a piece of your Z-seam. You can see it puts them all over the place. This is a terrible idea. Let's not do that. We'll go back and choose user specified and then we'll choose front. Slice it up and have a look. Oh, now front isn't ideal, is it? Because the Z-seam is clean down the middle of his face and body. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and choose back. Let's slice and again we'll preview. Preview, preview, preview. Preview the heck out of your models before you print. It'll save you tons of wasted time and filament. So here's the Z-seam right here, right down his back. Kind of breaks it up a little bit, puts a little bit all over the place. I guess it doesn't have a direct path to use. But you can see it's out of sight from the front view of the model, which is super. But you have to wonder, with him having arms here in the side, maybe we can get away with back corner. So we'll choose back left and slice them up. Now look at that. You can see the Z-seam follows between the ridges of the pumpkin head and inside the corner of his arm and then down his leg. So the Z-seam would effectively be mostly out of view from most visual angles of this model. That's the Z-seam you should go with. User specified, back left. Now that you have the general idea of how to hide a Z-seam for a figure, let's return to the knife. Here we have the handle for the blade that we looked at earlier. You will see I'm standing it up. This way everything is stacked and I can print this entire handle without supports as it sits flat on the bed and builds the model up. The big question is, where can I put my Z-seam so it's least offensive? Obviously, no Z-seam would be best, but we don't have that option. Starting with random and slicing this model, you're gonna see that random really is never a viable option. The dots are all over the place, and we want a smooth finish without all this garbage. So we can go ahead and choose user specified and make an educated decision, thinking of how this knife will be held in the hand and how it will mostly be looked at. We know we probably don't want a Z-seam along the sides or top edge of this model. So we'll look towards the underside. That gives us a choice of front left, front right, or simply front. Looking at this model, you can deduct that front is basically going to be centered and front left and front right will be identical only mirrored. One will be this corner, one will be that corner. Pretty much have a choice between whether we want the corner or the center. So let's do front and slice it up. As predicted, you can see it's running the Z-seam down the center of the model. Not so bad, but it's so unfortunate to have the Z-seam affecting the finger grips of this model's visuals. So I'm gonna try a corner. Let's see, left or right hardly seems to matter, but let's say I'm right-handed and I'm going to hold this knife with my right hand. That means my palm would cover the right side of this handle while holding it, and the left side of this handle would be exposed. So let's choose front right and see where it goes.
And there it is. The Z seam is running along the edge of the inside corner on the right side of this handle. If I was to grab this with my right hand, this area would be covered quite a bit by my hand, leaving the visible portion over here seamless. And that to me is the way I would go to print this model. However, watching your print, especially in the early layers, you want to see how it handles the little stop gap here create that Z seam you might find it has a little bit of trouble and if it does and you notice this is printing kind of sloppy you might want to return to the front center that way there's less of a steep angle where it's stopping and starting that layer right here in the center rather than during this sharp angle now that should be okay but I want you to know there is a possibility that your Z seam may print more successfully in one location over another and it's something just to keep in mind when you make z-seam decisions i'm greg also known as greg adventure and i'm your instructor on 3drundown.com if you enjoyed this video please consider my course and learn with me to become a better and more successful 3d printer